made you, will assign for you, will create for you, will allow for you to have. And this is the whole idea of the day of judgment, heaven, hell, all of that is there. I'm not saying these things are dreams. I'm saying these things are realities. But those realities don't depend upon the existential five senses, the being of a human being and five senses, these things. They can be rearranged. So here, does it make sense for us to say today that the reason why you're here is because you were created? What you're doing here is that you have a purpose. And your purpose is going to extend to your after-death experience. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. And does it make sense? Now look, I say for example, I'm an un unbiased individual. Yeah? I want to find out which is the correct religion. There are six major world religions. Honestly, yeah? I just want to find out which one is, the, is truth. Everyone is claiming to be right. I swear to God, it doesn't take that long to find out the answer. You know why? Of the six major world religions, only two are proselytizing. Only two, only one, only two religions actually attempt to have you as whatever they are. And that's Christianity and Islam. Judaism is not a proselytizing religion. Hinduism is not really a proselytizing religion. Sikhism is not really a proselytizing religion. And they're all regional religions. Yes. Yeah, and they're all religions which have backgrounds in some kind of, um, let's just say some mythology. And sometimes they'll be open about it. Like Hindus are very open about their mythology. And the mythology is very similar to Greek mythology, to be honest with you. Yeah? Yeah. So here, we have two candidates, Islam and Christianity. For me, to, to narrow the gap, all I have to do is look at the basic theology. Forget about everything else, just look at the basic theology. If I were to look at the basic theology of Christianity and Islam, I see that Christianity is a religion which, which talks about the Trinity, three and one and one and three. That Jesus is God, that the Holy Spirit is God and the Father is God and all three are one. I would argue that this is a fundamentally flawed theology and the idea that God is one is only really present in its purest and truest form, in its most logical form in the religion of Islam. Based on that logic, if we accept the premise of revelation through human beings, it does make sense that God is one and that there were a long line of prophets, which is the Islamic narrative, that there were a long line of prophets starting with Adam up until the final prophet which we call Muhammad all of which testified that there's only one God worthy of worship. Does that make sense? Yes. So here...